Hey guys, Eric here, and in today's guest video, we're gonna be taking a look at the new 52 Batman by Prime One Studios. And yeah, it's in two boxes, and you're about to find out why. All right, let's get them unboxed and assembled. As with all Prime One statues, you get assembly instructions, which is great. Uh, I will be following these because it is very complicated to put together. Um, up first, as always, we start off with the base. Now, this is the exclusive version. It was limited to 600 pieces. This is number 131. Up next, we're gonna have part of the building with the window. As you can see by the size of this, now you know why it came in two big boxes. Okay, up next you're gonna to wanna to put on the center gargoyle. Uh, after the gargoyle, you're gonna put on his arm, which grips onto the bottom of this platform. Like that. Uh, up next, we're gonna put on the two side gargoyles. Actually, we're gonna put on the wings first for the center gargoyle. All right, now we can put on the side gargoyles. Okay. Up next, we have Batman's body. So now Batman's body actually bolts into this window part of the base. So you're gonna need a, uh, a ratchet which happens to be, it's a 9 16th ratchet bit you're gonna need for the bolt. All right, let's get the screws or the bolts. It also comes with a washer. All right, you have Batman's body, he's extremely heavy. All right, so let's see, it goes in this way. All right, then once you get them in, you can take a washer. I'll try to get some up close shots of this so you can see what I'm actually doing. So it's a washer and a nut that you need to tighten up to hold them into place. I would start off hand tightening him first, and once you get it in pretty good, then you can start turning it with the ratchet. All right, let me spin him around just so you can see what that looks like. So as you can see right here, there's a, a bolt that comes out of his leg and it goes through the base. And then on the other side, you put a washer and a nut and tighten it to hold them into place. Um, when you put on the cape, you're actually gonna have the same thing on this side of the base with uh, a washer and a nut that holds um, the cape into place. Up next is the cape. The cape, by the way, is massive. I don't know if you can still see me behind Batman, but this is the size of the cape. So let me come around so I can do this easier. You're gonna slide. the cape into his neck area. And then at the same time, you have to line up the bolt in the back, which goes into the base. It's a little tricky to get in, but. Okay, there it goes. 
All right, so the same thing with the cape. Comes with a washer and a nut. I'll come around this side so you can actually see it this time. So you have the bolt, which pushes through the base here. And hand, hand tighten the nut in place. Once it's hand tightened, you can grab your ratchet wrench. Oh, also keep in mind, I wouldn't over tighten this too much just because you don't want to break the polystone. I'm not sure if this is actually metal inside the base. So I'm not taking any chances. I'm making it snug, but I'm not over tightening it. All right, um, up next we have Batman's portrait. You get two portraits with this statue if you purchase the exclusive edition. The exclusive edition comes with an angry face as well as him holding kryptonite. Uh, the other portrait is just uh, him with a stern look on his face. I kind of like the one without him looking angry. Okay. Uh, we're gonna use the hand with the kryptonite, because so that's the one I prefer. Nice strong magnet. And let's see, we have his other hand, which holds the grappling gun. Again, nice strong magnet. Oh, I forgot a piece on the back of the base here. On the back of the base, there's this piece of broken railing. Goes right there. Uh, and then finally, you just have the hook that goes inside the grappling gun. Okay. So this concept and design is based off of one of my favorite Batman comic book covers. It's the cover to the New 52 series, uh, Batman issue number three. The artwork was done by Ivan Reyes. Batman is flying through the air and about to shoot off his grappling gun. Now, while the pose is based off the Batman series, part of the concept, which has Batman holding the kryptonite, is from the Justice League New 52 book. It's an origin story where the team meets each other for the first time. Batman thinks Superman is a threat and fights him using kryptonite. It's a newer series with great artwork by Jim Lee. Moving into the review, it's a super dynamic pose. As mentioned, Batman is flying through the air. There's tons of Batman statues on the market, but not many with him holding his grappling gun. The majority of the statues are always with him holding a batarang, so it was nice to see Prime One do something new. When I think of Batman and his gadgets, the first thing that comes to mind is him using his grappling gun. So I'm actually surprised there aren't more statues out there portraying this design. Looking at the base, it falls in line with the rest of the Prime One New 52 Justice League line. You have a circular silver base with the character logo. There's broken rubble from a battle with Darkseid's Omega Beams, and each character has their own theme, which in this case for Batman, it's his gargoyles. Which, looking at the gargoyles, they're super creepy looking, and the sculpt is amazing. They almost remind me of parademons. Besides the gargoyles, you have part of a building and a window. The window is shattered and they did an awesome job once again with the sculpt and execution. The window is super thick clear resin, which happens to look like real broken glass. It, it might even be real glass, I'm not even sure. The base has tons of details and texture. Out of all the bases in this statue line, I think this is one of the best with the details and paint. The rest of the Justice League line, the bases were mostly just a grayish color. This time around, they really went all out adding tons of details and texture. And the paint is a mix of gray with good shading, but also browns to make it look weathered. The details in the sculpt of the base is what really stands out, and it's really impressive. If the base wasn't enough, you then have Batman, which again looks incredible. Finally, a quarter scale Batman with a comic accurate suit. It's so comic accurate, it's straight off the cover. It gets no better than that. 
It's a gray and black suit and pretty simplistic in terms of design, but at the same time, that's what makes it so great. It's very high tech looking with the lines running throughout the suit. It uh, kind of reminds me of a circuit board. If you look at the boots, they're not filled with tons of details like bootstraps or buckles and laces. They're simple and high tech and aerodynamic. Again, with the gauntlets, they're not overdone, just functional and high tech. They remind me of the Telltale games where he has controls and gadgets built into the gauntlets, which flip open. They're painted black, but there's also hints of blue highlights, which looks really cool. In the comics, blue is often used to highlight black areas. Uh, the gauntlets also have some battle damage to them. Uh, the suit, in my opinion, is the perfect color gray, and the N52 design is one of my favorites. The utility belt is very modern. It's not fabric pouches, but metal cases that look like they would actually hold some serious gadgets, weapons, and other paraphernalia that would get him out of trouble. His physique is not over-the-top muscular. He has a lean build, which I like. He can maneuver and it's believable that he could zip through the air or be acrobatic. At the same time, his muscle definition is perfect. They did a fantastic job with the sculpt of his body. It's a perfect balance of muscle definition and physical form. Looking at the portraits, with the exclusive version, you have an angry face. Prime One uses translucent resin for their portraits, which works very well for capturing small details like the teeth. On the regular portrait, it's a focused look, exact copy of the art from the comic book cover. The cowls are a modern design to fit with the overall theme and, again, my favorite so far that I've seen on a Batman statue. It's based off of Reyes' work, but Jim Lee did the majority of the artwork for the New 52 comics and when I look at this cowl, I see a Jim Lee design. Along with the exclusive Angry Portrait, you also get an exclusive hand holding Kryptonite if you ordered that version. The kryptonite looks great with the clear green resin. It catches the light and has a nice shine to it. Looking at the cape, you have a fully sculpted cape. One thing I appreciate Prime One doing and not using fabric, which can distract from the main figure. It's really nicely sculpted and flows across the air, giving the statue movement. The paint is black, but then there's some shades of grays and uh, a hint of blue to give it highlights. It's a powerful pose and they pulled it off perfectly to make Batman look realistically soaring through the air. However, keep in mind the cape is massive and between the cape and the base, this statue takes up a lot of space. Also, there does appear to be a slight gap around the cape in the uh, shoulder area. It's not a deal breaker and maybe it'll settle over time, but beware if this bothers you. The cape is somewhat heavy, but very thick and big, similar to the original Sideshow Premium format. In my opinion, Prime One should have stuck to how they did their New 52 Superman cape. It was very lightweight and full of detail and texture. Going back to the suit, I really like the design. As of right now, it's my favorite design. When I think of Batman, I think of technology, and this suit screams high tech. Look at the little details in the shoulders and the gauntlets with the silver lines running into the fingers. You also have them under his chest. Uh, again, it reminds me of some kind of circuitry running throughout the suit and it looks amazing. As mentioned, Jim Lee worked on this series, both cover and interior art, and this statue, in my opinion, is a perfect caption of his art, making it the best quarter scale Batman I've seen and I've owned or seen them all. My only critique of this statue would be the angle of the cape, and I feel he's slightly overscaled for a quarter scale piece. But the size and pose and everything else great about this statue is what makes it so impressive. I own a PAX, which has plenty of space for two statues per shelf, but because of those reasons, I did contemplate returning this as I just couldn't figure out where to fit him. This isn't a statue made for a Besta. It barely fits in a Pax. I've been calling it a triple threat. Between the depth of the window base and the depth of his arm reaching forward with the grappling gun, and then the width of the cape, this is not an easy piece to display. It's still an amazing piece, but if I could have it my way, I would have cut down on his overall size slightly 
and I would have angled the cape more towards the back. So overall, I'm super happy to finally have this in my collection. It's been almost a two year wait since our Prime One first showed this. They showed the entire Justice League New 52 line all at once, and they saved the best for last. To finally have uh, Batman, my favorite character, and something that's comic accurate, I can sit back and enjoy this in my collection. If you can see from behind me, I now own the entire New 52 Justice League line. Um, except I feel like something's missing. Hashtag release the new 52 Aquaman. Uh, as always, thanks for watching guys and until next time.